I'm Bob Rice, and in today's web series, we're going to talk about closed-loop control. As you recall, this web series is focused on the baseline knowledge required to become a good controls engineer. So it makes sense that we start at the beginning with what is closed-loop control. As we move through all the different web series, we're going to talk about open loop and closed loop control. So it makes sense at the beginning to go ahead and define what I mean by that. So let's start with a very simple example. We're going to start with a big tank. And what we want to do is we want to control the liquid level inside of this tank. And we can do that a couple of different ways. The easiest way would be to have some sort of pipe into this tank where we have some sort of large manual controlled valve and we put some sort of operator you know, up on a balcony overlooking this liquid level, right? We've got a nice little operator up here. They're looking down at the liquid level and they're making a decision. They're saying, hey, there's too much liquid in this tank. I'm gonna close that valve. Hey, there's too little liquid in the tank. I'm going to open that valve, right? This would be manual control or open loop control. All right. This is where the operator is directly manipulating the valve of the process to maintain some sort of level inside the tank. Okay. There's another type of process that we could do where we have the same tank, we have a liquid flowing into it like we did before, and we have some sort of liquid level in it, but instead of an operator directly manipulating the valve, we could actually put some sort of mechanical system in place to be able to maintain liquid level. So in this case, we'll just say we're going to have some sort of float that's going to sit on top of the liquid level and there's going to be some sort of arm that's attached to some sort of control mechanism, some control valve over here, right? And as this float moves up, this would turn some sort of series of, of gears that would um, close the valve, right? The liquid level starts to rise. There's too much liquid level in the tank. So we start to close that valve. If the liquid level drops, it's going to open that valve. So this mechanical system would actually maintain the liquid level in this tank automatically, right? So this would be kind of a, a very simple type of automatic control, right? This would be what you would use, for instance, in the back of your toilet. If you ever opened up the tank in behind your toilet, you see a float system with an arm attached to a valve, and you can actually control the liquid level in your tank by that valve move, uh, this float moving up and down and opening and closing the valve, right? So this is a simple type of automatic. But let's talk a little bit more about industrial automation and process control. So let's take the same type of tank, right? We've got our tank sitting over here, and we're still going to have our flow of the system in here. We're going to have a control valve that we can manipulate. We've got the liquid level inside of this tank, right? But instead of an operator sitting on top of it, we're actually going to measure the liquid level in this tank, probably through some sort of differential pressure or some sort of level sensing technology. We're going to measure the liquid level in this tank and then instead of an operator directly manipulating things, we're going to feed it into a level controller. This level controller is going to read the level indication. It's then going to feed back that information to the control valve and this algorithm here is then going to look at the level indicator and open and close the valve automatically to be able to maintain control. This would be an automatic or closed loop system, right? The controller and the loop is closed, right? We're measuring the liquid level and we're setting it back and this is a closed loop system, right? You could take this concept back to it over here and say, okay, well maybe the operator isn't physically looking at the level, right? Rarely are they doing that. There's probably some sort of level indication on even this simple process and that information is being fed forward to some sort of operator station, HMI, where they're getting a readout on the screen and this indication is going to a screen. And in fact, there's usually some sort of uh, control console where they can open and close the valve directly from here and that's going to manipulate the valve, right? They're not going out and physically opening and closing valves, right? So this is manual control and this is automatic control. This web series is going to talk about ways that we can optimize and understand this system. The next video in this series is going to talk about the control objective and trying to define what is good control. Thank you for joining me today and learning a little bit more about what closed loop and open loop control is.